Okay, welcome back. Well, um, I'm just going to talk for a couple of seconds, uh, just because for some reason when these videos first start, the first five or six seconds don't seem to come out right, and then after that it, it sort of clicks in. So, welcome back. You're now at lecture number three. So in lecture number one, we had an, an introduction and a little chat about why do people start at businesses and, and, and the point that we're um, preparing accounts and keeping accounting records because this is the language which is going to tell us how our business is, is performing c compared to the, uh, the key performance indicators, the KPIs that, that we've set. In lecture number two, we looked at the accruals concept and you saw how when do we actually include income and expenses? And that's a big, big topic for specific types of transactions. But that thing was a nice little introduction. And you saw there that we had Sally and Sally on the metro. Now coming on to um, lecture number three, we're going to be looking at a thing called the accounting equation. The accounting equation, to my mind, is something which is very easy. Students never have a problem with it. But what it's going to come with is this concept of duality. And duality is this idea that, well, that we work together. So that's what we're coming on to now. OK, so this is the, um, this is the famous accounting equation. Before we get into the equation, which is the three um, little smart art boxes shown up there, you'll see I've written underneath it the business, business entity concept. Can you notice that when you are preparing sets of books and records, when you're preparing financial statements for an organization, you only actually include those transactions that relate to the organization itself. So if I'm working as a sole trader, remember we looked at sole traders in lecture number one, and I am producing training material, which I do, and I'm delivering training courses, which I do, my accounts only show my income and expenditure for that business. The other thing, like the fact I go to the pub and buy some pints of beer and some bags of crisps and stuff, or I buy some dog food for my dog, you don't include any of that stuff. So all that goes in the accounts is what relates to the business, and that is called the business entity concept. Now, in businesses such as farms and shops, what will happen is that the business owners will take things out of the business for themselves. And those things are called drawings. So in your, in your accounts, you'll see a little account called drawings, and drawings is the money which the business owners have taken out of the business for themselves. So just looking at the accounting equation, it says that assets minus liabilities equals shareholders funds or, or capital. So in fact, what we're showing, therefore, is that the assets of the business, and this is the monetary value of those assets, minus the liabilities of the business, give us the shareholders funds. Now, shareholders funds are also a liability of the business. Just imagine, you set up a little business, you are buying bottles of water and you are selling them to people outside football grounds. At the end of the week, you've spent $200 purchasing water and you've received $400 for what you've sold. There is no concept that that money is not yours. That profit of $200 is yours. But as far as the accounts are concerned, the accounts are for the business itself. So therefore, this idea that the excess of the assets over the liabilities is what's due to the shareholders. That is a liability of the business to the owners. And so that's all that this, share, that this, that this little um, accounting equation shows us. The assets of the business minus the liabilities of the business show us what is due to the business owners, so the shareholders' funds, or what is due to the business owners. And that is the accounting equation, bearing in mind that the accounts, the financial statements themselves, for the organisation. Assets minus liabilities equals what's due to the owners. OK, you will come across this thing called drawings. Here we have what's due to the owners. And then if they start taking things out of the business for themselves, can you see that liability will fall? because what's due to the owners is falling because the owners are taking things for themselves. Right, those things are called drawing. Okay, right, that's relatively straightforward. What we're coming on to next is kind of more important because what's coming on to next
next now is this concept of recording information. Now we're on to slide number three. Right, now you're, now you're getting actually into the meat and bones of it. Now, financial accounting is a numbers subject. It's not a theory subject or a written subject, um, such as auditing, for example, or strategy. So what we're going to start doing now is we're going to start actually doing some numbers here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you this little example. You can read it for yourself, but you can see that what's happening here is that this guy has decided that he's going to set up a business uh, selling some form of tables. He's been given some cash by his mother, uh, and it tells you that his mother expects to be paid back. So that's telling you that it's a liability of the business. So the business will have a liability to the mother. And then over the course of the month, he will sell them. So a very, very, a very, very simple little example here. Right, what we're going to do with this is we're going to do three things. We've just got these three or four little entries to make. One is that we're going to just look and see how we record these things. And when we record them for me, um, for me, when we record them, I'm going to tell you or explain to you what is the, this process of duality and what means duality. And you'll see how we record them. Uh, then we're going to do a little profit loss account, see how much profit we've got. And then we're going to do a little calculation of how much cash we've got as well. OK, so we're going to do these three things. Then what we're going to do in the next lectures is we're just going to do about another three or four of these things as we go through them. The easiest way to do this is repetition. You learn by doing. So I suggest that you watch this one and then with the later ones, you try and have a bash at them yourselves. But with these things, you can print off all of these slides and the slides are, are on the website, which is nefielding.com. And then it's Introduction to Accounting from Memory. But I'll put the link up below. OK, so we said we had three things to do. The first thing that we're going to do is that we're just going to look at how we record these transactions. Then we'll come on to looking at the cash and then we'll come on to looking at the profit. So the lad whose name was Dave has got these transactions. So can you see what we've done here? We've split this here into two columns. So in this column down here, which you'll notice is on the left. Right, please, again, remember you're learning a language. Can you just remember how I've done that? We've put this on the left because in the future, we're going to start calling these things debits. So debits go on the left and a debit is an asset, a loss, or an expense. On the right goes everything else. So I've called them for the purposes of now income and liabilities, but really it's everything else. So within this course, right, we've got $5,000. Now we're talking about this idea of duality. So duality means that every transaction has two equal and opposite effects. So when Dave borrows 5,000 bucks from his mother, two things happen. The first thing is that he has an asset and the asset is the cash. So what we're going to do is we're going to put here 5,000 in cash because remember the business entity concept, the cash of the business has gone up by 5,000. Now at the same time the business represented by Dave as a liability, which is a loan to his mother. So therefore, what's happened is that we have these two things. We have something here on the left, which is an asset, which is our cash going up, and we're going to call that debit cash. And on the other side, we've got this loan to the mother. So we're going to credit the loan. So therefore, we are going to, if you are talking to an accountant, you are going to debit cash, 5,000, and you are going to credit the loan, 5,000. Right, the next thing that he did with his 5,000 was he bought some tables. So we have here an expense. And the expense is a purchase of, make sure my maths is right, 5,000. 10 tables, they're 10, 10 bucks, 10, 3, 10 tables, they're 500 bucks each. So therefore, we, that is an expense. So we put that on the left, we will call that debit purchase of 5,000. 
Now up here, we had an asset. To make our asset go up, we debited it. What's happening now is it's going down. So therefore, we will credit cash by 5,000. So to make an asset go up, you debit it. So to make cash go up when you receive cash, you debit it. And to make it go down, you credit it. Let me correct that for you. There you go. So now we have a purchase, right? Please notice what I've called that. Can you get used to using that word? You'll see why in a minute as well. So what we are going to do, therefore, is we are going to debit our expense, which is purchases, 5,000, and we will credit cash 5,000. Finally, he's made a sale. So here we've got down here 10 tables straight away. This is a sale. Now what's happening is our asset, which is cash, is going up again. So we will debit cash 6,000. 10 tables, our cash has gone up. So cash goes up, we debit it. Cash goes down, we credit it. Debits we write on the left of the page, and credits we write on the right of the page. And that is going to be sales. Get sales right, we will credit. In fact, what we do when we write this, now you've seen that, when we write it short form, you may have spotted this already. Too lazy to write the whole thing. Okay, there you go. That's how we've entered it. Right, things to notice. Debits go on the left. Debits are assets, losses, and expenses. And you'll see that written as ale. Those of you who speak some English will know what that is. Ale is what is a debit. An asset, a loss, and an expense. Everything else, for the purposes of this course, is a credit. But really, you're looking for income and liability. Duality, so we put on the left-hand side cash. Cash went up, so we debited it. And on the right, we have a liability, the loan to his money, which is 5000 We purchased some tables, so we debited the expense, and which went on the left, and we credited the cash, which is on the right. We made a sale. Cash went up, 6000 and our sales, therefore, is the balancing item of 6,000. Notice that what goes on the left must equal the right, otherwise the thing won't balance. Okay, so on the last slide, what we did was we uh, looked at the debits and credits. So it's this idea of duality that you put everything goes in twice, what goes on the left must equal goes in, what goes in on the right. So on the left, we put our assets, our losses, and our expenses, and on the right goes everything else. Right, in this slide, we're just gonna calculate now how much cash the guy's got at the end of the month. So this is a fairly straightforward process. You don't need any accounting for this, and it really should take you just two seconds. We do it because what you're gonna see as you come through this is that cash is not the same as profit, okay? So all we're doing now on this slide here is calculating how much cash has the guy got. So uh, what was his name? Dave, wasn't it? So Dave got 5,000 bucks, which came in from his mother. So that's plus $5,000. He purchased his tables, which cost him 5,000 bucks. And then when he sold them, he got 6,000 back. Right, and that's it. So therefore, the balance on his cash account at the end of the month is six that is six thousand dollars okay right all that we've done is we've calculated the total amount of cash that he's got so it really really is nice and simple as an accountant knowing how much cash you've got it's going to become an important part of the job so the final thing that we're going to do is that we are going to look at how much profit dave has actually made Right, can you notice that when we look at the profit that he's made, we don't include the loan because the purpose of the business is to buy and sell tables. So the, the loan that he's got from his mother is a source of finance and that doesn't affect the amount of profit that he's actually got. That's the first thing. The second thing, therefore, is, and we'll just go through and fill these numbers through. 
but we're going to look at this thing over here, which is called the costs of goods sold. Right, his sales are fairly straightforward. During the period, Dave sold or whatever, 10 tables for 600 bucks each. So all of those tables are sold. We haven't got any issues with damaged tables or bad debts or anything like that. That's all coming later. So therefore, the figure for his sales, I hope, everyone understands, is 6,000. Right, when we prepare the profit and loss account, what we do is we say, how much have we actually sold? And then what is the cost of the items that we have sold? Is everyone clear on that? So we've sold 10 tables, therefore we will show what is the cost of 10 tables. If David actually bought 15 tables and he'd only sold 10 of them, we would show the sales for 10 and we would show the cost for 10. So we are matching, remember back to Sally, the girl on the match show? We are matching the cost, the cost with the sales. We sold 10 tables, so we show the cost of 10 tables. Now in this example, it's easy because you bought 10 and sold them all. But in real life, a company, you know, a big company like IKEA will buy 2 million tables from suppliers and they will only sell 1.8 million. So you're going to have to do this matching process. Therefore, please can you notice the name of this? What we match with the sales is called the cost of goods sold. Right, well, what have you actually sold? Just think about it logically. You have actually sold what I had at the start plus what I bought minus what I've got left at the end. So you've actually sold what you had at the start, plus what you've bought, minus what you've got left at the end. Now Dave at the start had nothing because he's just begun to trade. Right, please can you notice as well that this is dollars. So this is the, the dollar value of units. So what he had at the start was nothing. So it had no value at all. Right, he purchased 5,000 bucks. So what did he go through his hands? What he had at the start plus what he purchased minus what he's got left at the end. Right here at the end again, he's got nothing. So his closing inventory has a financial value of absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. There we go. So Dave's cost of sales is 5,000. So his profit is 1,000. And in his balance sheet, therefore, Dave will have cash of 6,000 and Dave will have a liability of five, giving a profit of one. Right, we'll do the balance sheet for you in a second. There you have now Dave's income statement or his profit and loss account for the month of January. Okay, so let's finish this off. Right, we're kind of touching on this now, and what I'm doing is I'm just throwing information at you. But your financial statements at their very simplest consist of two statements one is your profit and loss account, so it shows what revenue and expenses you've got, and then your second statement is going to be your balance sheet. Your balance sheet will show your assets, your liabilities, and your shareholders' funds, the stuff that you saw in your accounting equation. So, yeah, okay, this stuff is coming really, really fast at you now, but just try and keep up. What we're going to do is we're going to do it 20 times, and then by the end of time number 20, you'll get it. So for Dave at the end of January, he now needs to show his accounting equation. And that's really what the balance sheet is. So even when you're looking at, you know, Johnson & Johnson or McDonald's or these enormous companies, it's just this, but with more in it, that's all. So therefore, at the end of the month, if you remember that Dave sold, thank you, Dave sold all of his tables. And so Dave has assets to the value of 6,000. And in fact, those assets are, as it shows you over here, cash. So from your statements, you're now lifting the numbers from the transactions and they're coming up into these statements. 
he has a liability, and the liability is the loan to his mother, which is 5,000. Remember your accounting equation, assets minus liabilities give you shareholders funds. Right, the assets are greater, so Dave has 1,000, which is his profit. That is the money which is due to him. Now it's just gonna work, and you will see therefore that the assets and liabilities of the business both equal 6,000. 6,000 is up there, which is his assets, 6,000, which is his profit. Okay, you really, really have done a lot in that, in that lecture there. That's kind of like all of accounting because you've pretty much seen everything now. You've got income, you've got expenses, you've got assets, you've got liabilities, you've seen the profit loss account, and you've seen the balance sheet. Uh, with the exception of the cash flow, you've kind of done everything. So that's accountancy from start to finish. Now it just becomes more and more complicated. So you just get to do it faster and faster. At the stage that you're at at the moment, if it's just seeming like information is just flying at you, don't worry about it. Just stick with it. Remember, it's like learning a language. You have a whole lot of words and a whole lot of phrases to learn. And when you just use them all the time, it becomes, it begins to become natural and it begins to fit. And you'll get there. So I think this is lecture number three, something like that. So with lectures number four and five, we're just going to do the same thing over and over again.